the 29th of April 1996. After a lengthy standoff with the police, Martin Bryant would eventually be arrested. This was after he randomly guns down 35 people and injures more than 20. This would later be considered as one of the deadliest shootings in the world. Martin received 1,652 years for his crimes. Adding to that, he received 35 life sentences, with no possibility of getting paroled. Join me, as we explore the life and crime of Martin Bryant. Welcome to Simply Told. The thing money can't buy is your mama. She's for free and everybody knows it. Martin was born on the 7th of May 1967 at the Queen's Alexandra Hospital in Tasmania. He was the first born to parents, Morris and Carleen Bryant. He was a rather destructive kid, with his mom recalling in a later interview, saying that when Bryant was young, she would often come across toys that he'd taken apart or simply destroyed adding that he was an extremely annoying child. A psychologist described Martin as aggravating. Someone who could never hold down a normal job. Teachers described him as emotionless. Someone that doesn't seem to be in touch with reality. He was a bit of a bully at school, and he was known to be violent at times. These antics gets him suspended, in 1977. Returning the following year, in 1978. He was later transferred to Newtown High School in 1980, considered to be a special education unit. Martin's behavior got worse over the years. In 1983, in his final year of school, Martin was assessed to see if he'd qualified for a disability pension, which he receives. With the psychiatrist doing his assessment, states afterwards, quote, cannot read or write. Does a bit of gardening and watches TV. Only his parents' efforts prevent further deterioration. Could be schizophrenic and parents face a bleak future with him. End quote. In 1987, a 19-year-old Martin meets a 54-year-old heiress named Helen Mary Elizabeth Harvey. She was living with her mother, Hilza, who also became friends with Martin. He would regularly visit the pair at their mansion. Hilza was dealing with some health issues and moves into a nursing home. She dies several weeks later, at the age of 79. With her mother gone, Martin moves in with Helen. They seem to enjoy each other's company. Shopping together, spending tons of cash on various items, but especially cars. In 1991 the two moves onto a 29-hectare farm in Copping. But sadly, the following year, on 20 October 1992, Helen was killed in a head-on collision. Martin was a passenger in the vehicle at the time of the incident. He sustained serious neck and back injuries, and spent seven months in hospital. Police questions Martin, as it's reported that at times, as a passenger, Martin would suddenly lunge at the steering wheel, causing the vehicle to swerve. Martin did that on numerous occasions to Helen. He was directly responsible for her previous car accidents. Helen changed her driving style to accommodate Martin's strange ways. Explaining to friends, it's the reason why she doesn't exceed 60 km per hour. Martin was the sole beneficiary of Helen's estate, worth more than 550,000 Australian dollars.
Martin's dad, Morris, struggled with depression and was prescribed antidepressants. On 14 August 1993, a note was found stuck to a door. The note reads, Call the police. The police searched the farm. Divers were called in to search the dams on the property. Then sadly, on 16 August, Martin's dad was eventually found in one of the dams. Police believe he committed suicide. Martin would inherit an additional 250,000 Australian dollars from his father. Martin's dad was interested purchasing a bed and breakfast that recently come on the market. But that property was sold to Nolene and David Martin. He heard his father mention on numerous occasions how damaging it was to the family losing that purchase. And that was all it took for Martin to blame the Martins for his father's depression, that took his life. He shoots the couple in their guest house. He then travels to the historic Port Arthur and walks into the Broad Arrow Cafe carrying a large bag. He sits down and orders something to eat. When he was done with his meal, Martin got up and makes his way to the rear of the restaurant. He grabs a video camera from the bag and places it on a table. He dips back into his bag and pulls out a semi-automatic rifle. With the gun, positioned low and on the hip. He pulls the trigger, gunning down patrons and restaurant staff at random. Several seconds later, 12 people lay dead. Martin makes his way to the other end of the cafe, killing eight more. He continues the rampage shooting people at random, killing four more people, before his scene speeding off in his car. He then spots a woman walking down the street with her two kids. He brings his car to a stop and fires two shots in their direction, killing the woman and the child she was carrying. Her daughter tries to run away, but Martin chases after the young girl. He catches up with her before firing a single shot in her direction, killing her. His next victims was the four occupants of a car he hijacked. He then notices a couple in their car. He pulls up next to them and points his gun at them, instructing the male occupant to get into the boot of Martin's car. After securing his hostage in the trunk, Martin points his gun at the couple's car and fires two shots through the windscreen, killing the female occupant. Martin heads back to the first crime scene, the bed and breakfast. The police eventually catches up with Martin hiding out at the guest house. The negotiations couldn't have gone well, because at some point, Martin shoots and kills his hostage. The standoff lasts all night. Martin decides to set the guest house on fire, with the hopes of escaping. But unfortunately for Martin he doesn't escape the flames unharmed. He was captured after sustaining burns to his back and buttocks. Martin Bryant received 35 life sentences and 1,652 years behind bars. It's highly unlikely Martin will ever be a free man again. He will be spending the rest of his natural life behind bars.